Hey, what's up guys? It's Roosevelt Williams with Tinker Pro, and in this video, I wanna share with you a project I completed recently. A year ago, I went back into my portfolio to enhance some older projects that I completed in the past. With skills that I've developed over time, I was able to enhance an old project that happens to be one of my early favorites. To the left here, you'll see the robotic arm edge. This was a reverse engineering project where I basically bought a robotic arm that I thought would be cool to assemble and create a 3D model of. Here on the right is what it looks like now. The rendering on the left was done in Inventor, whereas the rendering on the right was done in Fusion 360. The 3D model turned out great, and it was a lot of fun developing it and enhancing it later down the line. But unfortunately, I never found the time to assemble the arm. But that's another story for another day. The next project on my list to enhance was a concept crossbow that I was inspired to develop based on a random GrabCAD crossbow I stumbled upon years ago. The project was called the Expo Crossbow. The Expo Crossbow is second on the list of favorites from my early days, but I never got around to enhancing the 3D model because around the same time I was enhancing my portfolio, I bought my first 3D printer. And that printer was the original Purusha MKS Plus. It took me roughly six days to assemble it, but getting it calibrated and ready to print was pretty straightforward. It didn't take long before it hit me. Instead of enhancing the Expo Crossbow 3D model and renderings, why not redesign it to be 3D printed and built? And so, that's what I did. I started out with a little research and development to see what other 3D printed crossbows were already out there. And I saw some cool stuff, but nothing really caught my eye. Until I came across a video of a 3D printed crossbow pistol that was inspired by a wooden crossbow pistol. I'll leave links in the description below for you guys to see where I found inspiration for my 3D printed crossbow design. What caught my eye with the 3D printed crossbow pistol was how the serving was developed. Developing a serving was the most challenging part of the entire project. And using the 3D printed crossbow pistols serving as reference helped me overcome that challenge. In the beginning, I thought to design my crossbow with cams and cables like the more modern crossbows you see today. But I quickly realized that concept would be more difficult and take way more time to develop for a 3D printed version. Unfortunately, I didn't come to this realization until after I spent $185 on a professional crossbow riser that I purchased on eBay. The Expo crossbow was developed in SolidWorks which was my favorite CAD software in my early days, so I continued furthering its development in SolidWorks. My design started with the grip. I wanted a nice firm size grip for my design, so I used my Colt 1911 handgun as reference. I took some basic measurements of the handgun handle to get a good overall size, and I adjusted accordingly. After adjusting, I began modeling out the details of the grip adding some chamfers and rounded the edges to give it a smoother, more comfortable feel. I developed the trigger guard to be spacious enough for my finger when it's in position or just resting off to the side. The grip was simple, but it took quite a few attempts to get that firm, comfortable feel that I was looking for. In the early stages of developing the grip, I designed a couple templates to determine the best position for the trigger mechanism which is a component I will talk about later in this video. I put a lot of focus in developing the grip to mate with other components of the crossbow, like the bridge and trigger housing. Those are two components that I will talk about later in this video. The components of the crossbow are assembled using a method that I picked up while assembling my 3D printer. The method is simple. You have two components, components A and B. Component A has a slot with two quarter inch counterbore holes evenly spaced apart. This is the female end. The counterbore is on both sides of the female, but one side is hex shaped for a machine screw nut. Component B has an insert with two quarter inch through holes. This is the male end. With a suitable tolerance, these components come together and are fastened using two one inch Everbuilt machine screws and two corresponding nuts. This method of assembly is used throughout the crossbow design but it's a little different for the assembly of the flight groove components and the riser. I'll talk about that later in this video. After developing the grip, I move backward towards the bridge. The bridge is a simple component. Its purpose is to provide space between the grip and the stop. The bridge is a quarter inch offset inward from the rear end of the grip, 
extruded outward four and a half inches with inserts on both ends to connect the grip and the stock. The stock was designed to rest on my shoulder and just like the grip and bridge, it's a fairly simple design. I did some research on typical rifle stock dimensions to determine the best length for the bridge and stock. My first attempt assembling the bridge and stock failed due to weak inserts that needed to be adjusted in size. After making those adjustments, I had a grip and stock that felt comfortable in my hand and on my shoulder. Once that was complete, I moved forward to the trigger housing where I designed a housing for the triggering mechanism to be assembled to the grip for firing. Now originally I was going to design my own triggering mechanism, but then I realized how much time I spent reinventing the wheel, so I decided to purchase an existing triggering mechanism instead. I bought a used trigger mechanism on eBay for about 60 bucks, and I created a rough 3D representation of it to reference in my design. Now, although I designed my own crossbow, I never actually owned or shot a professional crossbow in real life. So when I noticed there was a lever on the trigger mechanism that was preventing me from being able to cock and fire it repeatedly, I immediately designed around it. I designed a special clamp that would keep the lever down and slide into the housing I designed for the trigger. I later researched that the lever was a dry fire prevention switch which was designed to prevent the user from releasing the serving without an arrow present because doing so could potentially damage the crossbow. Now I know what you're thinking, yes, I solved an issue without doing my research, but it actually worked out in the end. Because in my case, I needed the switch to stay down so that I can run test shots with the servings I developed later in my process. However, the clamp had to be removed in later stages of development because it prevented the arrows from lining up with the trigger properly. The trigger housing was first developed from the templates I mentioned earlier. After finding the best position for the trigger mechanism, I cut out the grip portion of the template to aid in the development of the trigger housing. Unlike the other components, the trigger housing is more complex because it serves multiple purposes and its design is a little more sophisticated. The trigger housing not only houses the trigger, but it is also the first part of my flight groove. Inside the trigger housing is a quarter inch hex counterbore socket that must receive a machine screw nut before assembling the trigger mechanism to the housing. If you don't add a nut to the internal hex socket before assembling the trigger mechanism to the housing, the housing will not mate properly with the grip. You'll see why in a bit. The trigger mechanism is assembled to its housing using two machine screws that will mate with the internal threading of the trigger mechanism. You must secure the trigger mechanism to the housing with these screws before attaching the housing to the grip. The trigger housing is assembled to the grip using the method I mentioned earlier, but there is a third screw that comes into play to keep the housing aligned with the trigger. The third screw is located at the tip of the trigger guard and it will mate with the internal nut that was placed in the trigger housing socket before assembling the trigger to the housing. It took several tries to get the trigger mechanism to be perfectly flush with the top of the housing. It was crucial that the trigger mechanism was flush in line with the flight groove or else the serving wouldn't properly catch an arrow like it should. After the trigger housing was properly assembled to the grip, I did some research on arrow lengths to determine the best length for my flight groove, which is like the barrel of a rifle for better reference. As I mentioned earlier, the first part of the flight groove is also the housing for the trigger mechanism. Since I had already started the flight groove profile in the trigger housing, I copied that profile over to a new file to develop a typical component to create the overall flight groove design. I bought a 12 pack of 20 inch hunting archery arrows and I created a 3D model of one of them to add to my CAD model. The model arrow helped me determine the overall length of my flight groove, which came out to be a little over 21 and three and a quarter inches. The overall flight groove is made up of three components two typical components for length and the housing for the trigger mechanism. The components that make up the flight groove are assembled using the same method that I mentioned earlier, but it's a little different this time. You have two components, components A and B, 
Component A has two slots with two quarter inch counterbore holes evenly spaced apart. This is the female end. The counterbore holes are on both sides of the female, but this time they don't go all the way through. Component B has two inserts with two quarter inch counterbore hex holes on the inside walls of the inserts. The hex counterbore is for a screw nut that will mate with its corresponding screw internally. With a suitable tolerance, these components come together and are fastened using four half inch Everbuilt machine screws and four corresponding nuts. This method is also used to assemble the riser to the end of the flight groove. Speaking of the riser, I started its development once I finished developing the overall flight groove. The riser is the coolest looking component of the crossbow. It took me three days to develop and over 30 hours to 3D print. The riser has four hex counterboard pockets with quarter inch through holes. The pockets are for the nuts that will mate with the corresponding machine screws to assemble the limbs to the riser. I wanted the riser to be strong and durable, so I increased the density of this component to 25% during the 3D printing process. Most risers on professional crossbows come with a cocking stirrup, which is a handle looking attachment on the front of most crossbows used to keep the crossbow in place during cocking. I didn't feature a cocking stirrup in my design because my 3D printed version does not require that much leverage to be cocked back. However, this is only the first prototype and there will be changes in later versions. After several failed attempts, I successfully designed my riser and it was time to create the limbs. The limbs were the simplest components of the crossbow design. At 11 inches in length, one inch in width, and half inch in thickness, my limbs featured three quarter inch holes, two for screws to mate with the riser and one on the far opposite end for the serving. With both limbs attached, the riser and limbs have a wingspan of 22.3 inches. The professional riser I bought earlier in my process played a part as a reference for developing my riser and limbs so it wasn't a complete waste after all. I ran a stress simulation on those two components to get a better idea of where the design could potentially fail, and I reinforced those areas to be as strong as possible. After all the design and printing work was complete, it was time to develop my serving. To construct my serving, I used 12 inches of polypropylene rope, 15 inches of thermoband tubing, and four nylon zip ties. I also used a pair of scissors for cutting and a lighter to melt the ends of the polypropylene rope. These were the same materials used for the 3D printed crossbow pistol I mentioned earlier. I started by cutting three 4 inch pieces of polypropylene rope using a small ruler. Then I cut two 7.5 inch pieces of thermoband tubing. I tied a knot on one end of the polypropylene rope and melted it down with the lighter. I did this for two of the three pieces of polypropylene rope, one for the left limb and one for the right limb. After inserting the two knotted pieces of rope through the left and right limbs, I created another knot on the opposite ends of the rope and melted it down. After melting the knots of the opposite ends, I took my thermoband tubing and slid it over the knot going inward towards the center of the flight groove. It was a little tricky, but once I slid the thermoband tubing over the knot, I placed a zip tie over the polypropylene rope and the thermoband to tie them both down. Once the thermoband was secured to the polypropylene rope on both sides, I tied a knot on both ends of my last piece of polypropylene rope. After melting down those knots, I connected the last piece of rope in the same fashion as the rope connecting the limb. Due to the tension in the thermobands, I had to disassemble my limbs from my riser to complete the final step. In the past, I used the three inch Everbuilt machine screw and four nuts for my first serving attempt. The machine screw got all bent up before I can even fire an arrow. This was a bad idea. Not only did the machine screw bend out of shape, but it also smashed against the riser during some dry fire test shots and it did significant damage to it. 
That explains the dry fire prevention switch I bypassed earlier. This is an example for the purpose of the dry fire prevention switch I bypassed earlier in my design. Since this is only a prototype, I didn't bother printing a new riser because the slightly damaged one still worked fine even after multiple dry fire tests with the machine screw, although the damage looks much more severe now than when I started. It took a few tries, but once I had a serving with a good amount of tension in it, it was time to fire my first test shot, and the results were much greater than I was expecting. Oh, sh Look at that, bro. I just did two test shots and they both were great. And so now I just want to do a video of me doing another test shot just, just to show you that uh, I have a functioning crossbow. Got it loaded, gonna disengage the safety. And I'm gonna shoot it and we're gonna see how it looks. After a dozen more test shots, it was time to impress my friends by letting them shoot the crossbow as well. All right. Go ahead. I got a mobile home for sale. Fucking hit me. 847 You got a, the nine, safety. Seven, six, five. Yeah, yeah. You would shoot from the hip like a Come gangster. On, like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that felt so good. Uh, your ass, you, you look like a, uh, Al Capone's. <laughs> And there you have it, the Expo crossbow. What started off as a crossbow concept has now been developed into a fully functional 3D printed crossbow. This is only the beginning. While the prototype looks cool and functions like a crossbow would, there are still a lot of improvements to make moving forward. My goal is to go back into the lab and cook up a second version of the crossbow with improvements and new features that I will share with you guys in the future. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and be on the lookout for more content to come. Thanks for watching.